In the last video, I defined uh, the notion of irreducible elements and prime elements in an arbitrary integral domain. And we are looking at various examples. Let us recall what is a what is an irreducible element so and what is a prime element. So, before I start uh, the new material, this is the definition, right? So, an irreducible element is a element which is not a unit and it has no proper divisors. So, we, we talked about the notion of divisors just like we have the notion of divisors in integers, we have divisors and a proper divisor is analogous to proper divisor is proper divisors in the integers where for example, number 10 has divisors 1 and 10 certainly, but they are not considered proper divisors. Uh, so, proper divisors of 10 are 2 and 5. So, an irreducible element in an arbitrary integral domain is an element which has no proper divisors. On the other hand, a prime element is an element which when it divides a product of two elements, it must divide one of them. In the case of integers, they both agree, uh, which is not difficult to check using high school arithmetic and also it will follow from our general results that we will prove later. And I ended the last video uh, halfway between uh, halfway in the example that we are doing. We are trying to give an example of an element in a ring which is irreducible but not prime. So, we consider the ring R which is z adjoint square root minus 5. So, it consists of elements like this a plus b times square root minus 5 where a and b are integers and in this we are trying to look for an irreducible element which is not prime. And I claim that 2 will do the job for us and I think in the end by the end of the last video I proved that 2 is not prime because 2 divides the product of 1 plus root minus 5 and 1 minus root minus 5 which is actually 6. So, 2 divides the product, but we argued that 2 does not divide either of them. So, the second part that I will do now is that, so let us uh, continue now, 2 is actually irreducible. Once I show this, it will follow that in this ring we have an element which is not prime, but it is irreducible. So, if you recall the definition of an irreducible element, it should not be a unit and it should not have proper divisors. So, I will simply write clearly 2 has 2 is not a unit. Okay, this is actually very easy and I should leave this as an exercise for you to check the details. But suppose if 2 is a unit, what does this mean? Unit remember means it has a multiplicative inverse. 2 times a plus b times root minus 5 will be equal to 1 by definition because 1 is the multiplicative identity element, 2 is a unit means 2 times this is 1. But if this happens, you argue you have 2a plus 2b and continue, okay. So, you continue like this to get uh, a contradiction. So, this is an exercise for you, it is a very simple exercise, but I will leave this for you to do. So, now we need to show that it has no proper divisors. So, suppose there is a divisor because remember our ring is a r is z adjoined square root minus 5. So, this is the ring that means elements are of this form where a and b are integers is a divisor of suppose this is a divisor of 2. If this is a divisor of 2, we would like to conclude after some work that it, it is in fact a proper divisor. So, why is that? So, now I am going to recall for you the notion of an absolute value. Remember, if z is a complex number, let us say z is a plus i b, where a and b are real numbers, right? So, any complex number can be written as a plus i b, where a and b are real numbers and i of course is, is a square root of minus 1. Then, I am going to use this notion of absolute value which is a squared plus b squared. In fact, it is the square root of this maybe, but I am going to use this absolute value of z is a squared plus b squared. So, now if a plus b times minus square root minus 5 is a divisor of 2, that means by definition of b, a divisor in an arbitrary ring, 2 can be written as a plus b times root minus 5 times some other element in the ring. So, I do not need to spell it out, spell it out. So, let me just write this as x. By definition of a divisor, I have this. 
and remember all the numbers that we are considering in this ring are complex numbers of course r is contained in complex numbers right so we can take absolute value both sides on both sides we get absolute value of 2 is a plus b times minus square root minus 5 times absolute value of x right this is my definition of absolute value but this means what is the absolute value of 2 this is actually 2 squared which is 4 and what is the absolute value of a plus b times square root minus 5 remember I will write it here a plus b times square root minus 5 let us convert it into a form like a plus ib so this can be written as a plus square root b times i right it is a complex number where the real part is a imaginary part is square root b so absolute value will be is the absolute value of a plus square root b i which is a squared plus 5 b squared right we square the real part square the imaginary part and add them a square plus y b square it is actually just a plus i b times a minus i b that is what we have. So, 2 squared is 4 these are two equal complex numbers that means absolute values are equal. So, we have a square plus 5 b square times absolute value of x I do not know what absolute value of x is but remember absolute value of x will be also an integer. in fact a non negative integer because positive integer even because x is of the form it will be of the form c plus square root 5 d i. So, if you take the absolute value it will be a c squared plus 5 d squared. So, it will be a positive real number as long as x is a positive integer as long as x is a um, non zero element. This means a squared plus 5 b squared divides 4 this means a squared plus 5 b squared divides 4. Now, we are in the realm of integers right you have an integer a squared plus 5 b square which divides 4 that means a square plus 5 b squared must either be 1 or a squared plus b squared must be 2 or a squared plus 5 b squared must be 4. Remember a square plus 5 b square is a positive number because a plus i a and b are positive integers a and b are integers non zero integers. So, a square and b square are actually positive integers a square plus 5 b square must be a positive integer that divides 4. Now, certainly this implies that there is only uh, b has only one possibility because b must be 0 because as soon as b is positive or b is negative but non zero b squared will be positive and 5 b squared will be at least 5 but a squared plus 5 b squared is 1 2 or 4 so b has to be 0 and a immediately you see that a squared has to be 4 a squared has to be either 1 or 2 or 4 it cannot be 2 so it has to be either 1 or 2 so a is 1 or a is 2 okay so that means that or of course it can be plus minus 1 minus 2 but i should write but immediately you see that the the divisor we started with the arbitrary divisor that we started with a plus b times square root minus 5 is either plus one plus minus 1 or plus minus 2 hence Hence, we conclude that a plus square root uh, b times square root minus 5 is not a proper divisor. So, this is either 1 plus minus 1 or plus minus 2. So, it is not a proper divisor right of 2 because a proper divisor is supposed to be something which is not a unit and which is not an associate 1 and minus 1 are units and 2 and plus minus uh, plus minus 2 are associates of 2. Hence, 2 has no proper divisors and 2 is not a unit. So, 2 is reducible, but 2 is not prime. 
So, this example I did only to illustrate the fact that in general irreducible elements are not prime. So, that is my goal. In general irreducible elements are not prime. So, this is an important fact to remember. In an integral domain irreducible elements can be there that are not prime. However, the converse is true. So, this is a proposition. Let me prove this. Let R be an integral domain ok. Let R be an integral domain and let A in R be a prime element. Then A is irreducible. Okay. So, a prime element if you recall the definition I gave in the last video, a prime element is not a unit and if it divides a product B C, it divides one of them. So, it is not a unit. So, now I want to show that it is irreducible. So, to show we, we, we have to show two things. A is not a unit. and A has no proper divisors. Right? So, to show these two facts because these two parts give the definition of irreducibility. A is not a unit is ok because A is prime. Remember a prime element is automatically not a unit. So, that is uh, already given. So, we have to show that A has no proper divisors. So, suppose we have A is equal to DC. Suppose we have such a thing. That means, uh, in particular remember that means B divides A and C divides A. Because B times C is A, B divides A. Again B, B times C is A, so C also divides A. So, now let us use primality of A. We know that A divides B C of course, A is equal to B C. So, A equal to B C implies A divides B C, an element divides itself. So, A divides B C because A is prime, so I will write here, because of the primality of A, A divides B or A divides C, right. A prime element has the property that if it divides a product, it divides B if it divides a product B C, it divides either B or C. But B remember divides A or C divides A. So, we have A divides B and B divides A. So, A and B are associates or if A divides C, C also divides A. Remember these both happen. So, no matter here whether A divides B or A divides C, we can apply both these statements because B divides A and C divides A, both are true. So, A and C are associates. So, A and B are associates and A and C are associates. Sorry, A and B are associates or A and C are associates. But this means B is not a proper divisor of A. B and C are not proper divisors. Actually, I should say they are both not proper divisors because a proper divisor is one where both terms are not units and not associates right. So, we cannot have of course, if just to give you illustrate this suppose A is equal to B C and uh, B is an associate, B and C are associates, B and A are associates. This means that we have A is equal to B C. On the other hand, uh, B divides uh, A also, A divides B also. So, this is B, uh, sorry. So, you have uh, A is equal to B C is given, B also divides A. So, 
I am assuming A divides B. So, so I should write A divides B. So, I am just working out what happens if A divides B. That means A x is equal to B, right? A divides B means there exists some x such that A x equal to B. So, if A x equal to B, I can replace this as A x C. B is equal to A x. So, A x C. That means a times 1 minus x is equal to c. I can just subtract both sides, sorry, a, uh, this is not correct. Um, what I should write is a minus a x c is 0. That means a times 1 minus x c is 0. And I am assuming a is non-zero. That goes without saying, right? If it is uh, a 0 element, then it is certainly prime and irreducible whatever you call it, it is just a convention, but A is not 0. Now, here is where integral domain is important. In all this subject of when we talk about irreducible and prime elements, we are assuming that we are in an integral domain. So, if A times 1 minus x is 0, A is non-zero, so 1 minus x is 0, that means C is a unit, right? Because 1 equals x C, that means C has a multiplicative inverse. So, as long as you have a factorization where one of them is actually an associate, then the other must be a unit. So, this is not a proper factorization and A has no proper divisors. Hence, A has no proper divisors. So, A is irreducible. It is already not a unit because it is prime and we now concluded that it has no proper divisors. So, it is a irreducible element. So, just to recap the general picture for you, I will write in general regarding prime and irreducible elements, R is an integral domain. R is an integral domain. Always the following is true. Prime implies irreducible. This is always true as we showed just now in this proof. Uh, the converse so this is always true. Irreducible implies prime not always true. as uh, remember the example of z adjoint square root minus 5 and 2. So, in this ring 2 is irreducible, but 2 is not prime. So, this is the general description of uh, irreducible and prime elements in a arbitrary integral domain. So, in the remaining uh, video and in the next video or so, we are going to study rings where actually the converse is true. So, the topic that we are currently discussing is the notion of principal ideal domains and, and unique factorization domain. So, before I continue and define principal ideal domains, let me quickly give you some general definitions. General definitions are the following. So, let R be an integral domain. let R be an integral domain and let us choose two elements A and B in R. Let us choose two elements. I, I talk about, I want to talk about greatest common divisor. So, this is short form is GCD that you all are familiar with from high school, right? We know about GCD, LCM and so on. So, I want to carry over the notion that we have in integers namely GCD to an arbitrary integral uh, domain. So, what is GCD? So, let us formally define that. I want to now talk about A GCD of A B. So, because there could be many more, there could be more than one I mean. So, I always will say A GCD because even in integers, if you follow the definition of that I will give now, GCD uh, if 3 is GCD of 2 numbers, minus 3 is also GCD. So, I want to define A GCD of A and B is an element 
d in r such that it has two properties so first of all just like the in the integer case i want d to divide a and t to divide b okay so i want d to divide a and d to divide b it's a common divisor so this is a common divisor part it divides a and it divides b but it is greatest common divisor so it's not enough to be a common divisor and how do you phrase the greatest common divisor the greatest part in integers we have the notion of being big or small in an arbitrary integral domain there is no order we can't say one element is bigger than another element but we are now going to use this following notion which also holds in the case of integers if e divides both a and b so if there is some other common divisor so d is a common divisor and if there is some other common divisor then that common divisor divides d so this is the the greatest part first is the common divisor part second is the greatest part so e divides e and b implies e is a common divisor then e divides d so a greatest common divisor is a common divisor which is divisible by every common divisor so the standard examples remember are for example we take gcd of 4 and 8 then of course it's 4 gcd of 4 and 6 will be 2 gcd of 3 and let's say 12 is 3 gcd of 6 and 8 will be 2 and so on okay so th this is all something that you are familiar with we look at all numbers that divide both of them and uh, we take the largest one in the case of integers but because there is no largest or smallest elements in arbitrary rings we are going to stick to this definition where we want the common divisor to be divisible by every other common divisor so i want to stress that gcd may not exist gcd may not exist and that is because uh, again the ring that we used earlier which gave us an example of an irreducible element that's not prime in this same ring we can take the following so let's take a to be 6 and b to be 2 plus 2 times square root minus 5 so these are the two elements i will take so a is this b is this so now let us take d to be 2 and e to be 1 plus square root minus 5 these are both common divisors okay so one can show that both are common divisor that is because 2 certainly divides 6 2 times 3 6 2 also divides this 2 times 1 plus square root minus 5 is 6 so this is easy similarly e divides 6 because 1 plus square root minus 5 and 1 times 1 minus square root minus 5 is 6 so 1 plus square root minus 5 divides 6 it certainly divides b so because 2 times this is the b on the other hand we know that uh, okay this requires a little bit work can show 2 does not divide 1 plus in fact this is not difficult to show because if divides you write 2 times 2 as 2 times something equals 1 plus square root minus 5 and you use your standard arguments that we have used earlier in this video to get a contradiction 2 does not divide this similarly this also does not divide two. okay so you have these two things so this is easy actually this is not that difficult this is a standard calculation so you have two common divisors one does not divide the other okay so now in fact you can show that th there is no gcd because two is irreducible so you, now i will leave this as an exercise show that a which is 6 and b which is 2 plus have no greatest common divisor that is because you can show that d and d are irreducible so they will not uh, so 
and b is actually d times e right because b which is 2 plus 2 times square root minus 5 is d times e so any common divisor must be so gcd is either d or e gcd if a potential gcd i should write a potential gcd is either d or e because b has only two divisors really so it's either d or e and we just showed that d doesn't divide e e doesn't divide d so there cannot be a common device there are common divisors but there cannot be a, a greatest common divisor in this sense we don't have a common divisor which which is divisible by every other divisor okay so i'm going to stop this video here in this video we looked at more examples of uh, more more properties of irreducible and prime elements we have given an example to show that irreducible does not mean prime but prime always implies irreducible and we have defined the notion of gcd in an arbitrary integral domain in the next video we will start studying principal ideal domains and unique factorization domains thank you